Hello guys. Now as your computer is ready for development, um, let's proceed now. So you have installed the Jam server. If you have installed Jam server, so if you type Jam in your search bar, then this app should appear okay and then if you click on this app then it should lead you to this uh, this particular page and also you see one thing here uh, if i want to execute the program which is there in our web server so for example uh, i want to, to access the login page so what i have to do is basically say localhost see here it's written something like this that is i have to type uh, the in the address bar in the address bar of the web browser what i have to type is i have to type basically the name of the computer this is localhost colon 8000 as you know this is the name of the computer this could be an ip address this could be something like a.com or anything right since i'm using my local computer so it's coming as localhost then there is this port number so by default it is port number 80 but uh, in my computer this jamp is listening at port number 8000 so it's like localhost colon 8000 so up to that part now see here this represents this localhost and port number that is that represents the computer who is listening to or uh, you know listening to the uh, web request or the http requests and then this part represents the uh, you know the part uh, you know inside the particular computer so when you install jam server now let's see uh, in this video, we'll be uh, uh, discussing about the file structure. I mean, how we are going to organize our code uh, uh, for easy maintenance. Okay. Now, see why we need to organize our code. First thing is that it is for maintenance purpose. That is uh, the main uh, and the motivation. See, one thing, one analogous example I'm giving you. So, for example, you consider your room. You can keep all your, um, you know, all your things there in the room in the same place. I mean, your clothes, your books, your watches, uh, your shoes and everything. You just, you know, do not keep anything in any particular order. Anything could be anywhere, right? So, th th that is one way of uh, uh, you know, living, inside a, living inside your house. Another way is that you keep everything, you know, in a proper way. All your clothes are there in the cupboard, uh, uh, you know, and then all your books are there in, in your bookshelf uh, or on your desk. And uh, shoes are there in the proper place. And everything is there in proper place. You maintain your things, you know, you maintain the organization of the things properly. Now, the advantage certainly is that if you have to search for anything, suppose you are looking for a particular t-shirt that you want to wear in a particular occasion and you just have to no time to get it actually no time to search it you just if you keep your things in a proper way then it it will be possible for you because you know where that particular t-shirt is there uh, you know in the cupboard in which self where it is exactly right so you do not have to in, spend any time there to get a t-shirt but suppose you do not uh, you know keep your things in an organized way and suddenly you need that particular t-shirt and you wanted to wear that t-shirt for some reason uh, you know you're dying to wear that t-shirt for some reason say and you have you do not have much time to spend in you know, in the search of that t-shirt so you will not be able to meet that thing actually if you do not keep everything in a proper way because it might take like one hour to search for that particular t-shirt in your room so that is that is the you know, sort of the motivation of keeping all your codes in a proper way. So if you are developing a small application, then maintenance of this code is not a big deal because hardly there will be like four, five, ten files or ten lots of files will be there, and you can easily search them, no problem. But if your application is big, you know, bigger, and that time what will happen is that your your application might contain thousands of uh, files there and uh, you know different different file contains different types of code so as we said no like sometimes we'll be dealing with css sometimes javascript sometimes php and again in php some code will be responsible for generating the user interface some will be responsible for handling the asx calls some will be responsible for you know connecting with the database and accessing information from the database so all these different files containing different types of codes if you give everything in a single place then that will be quite messy i mean you know maintaining in that way will be a bit difficult for you if there are like thousands of files in there but what you can do is you can organize those codes uh, in, in some way so that um, you know maintaining the code becomes easy for you
and that is what we are going to see in this particular video okay we are specifically here we are not going to develop anything in this video we are just going to see what is the file structure or how we are organize our code uh, for the you know so that uh, in our uh, coming videos whatever the code we write we can maintain those code very easily uh, you know in this fashion so that is what we're going to tell you uh, what i'm going to discuss uh, in this video now again coming back to this point writing this thing in the address bar in this fashion how this thing is related to that file structure i'm just you know going to tell you uh, right now so what is the thing happening here is that now this is the name of the computer as i said now this is the this is your computer basically like this is the computer at this particular port number you want to send you know at this particular port number you are you are sending a request to this port of this particular computer and that request is for this particular page as login.php which is there inside this login folder which is there in inside this php crud as x folder now where is this php crud as x folder because if I ask you, like, so PHP crud is X folder in my computer. But again, in my computer, there might be C drive. Inside that C drive, I might have text, desktop documents. Where exactly is this PHP crud is X folder in my computer? Because this local head, local host 8000, you know that this is this laptop I'm talking about. But inside this laptop, where this PHP crud is X is, where it should be, actually. Right, because you see here, this is the like root folder. You know, all the code that you write, uh, everything. You know, this is the like the you know, the root folder inside which all the other folders and subfolders and you know individual files are there. Like where that root folder should be, that is the first question, isn't it? And now you see here, when you install Jam Server, where it gets in, uh, you know installed by default. Now, that is there in your C drive. Like, you go to your C drive. Like suppose if you have installed your Zem server, Zem server in a computer, and what will happen is in your computer, that is in your computer, in C drive, you will have a folder whose name is Zem. This particular folder you will have. It means, let me write it here. You have in C drive of your computer because there is only one C drive in your computer. There is no problem. That is in your computer in C drive, automatically Zem folder will be created for you. this folder automatically this folder jam folder will be created okay you do not need to worry about that part now jam is created now inside this jam if you if you double click on this folder you will see some other subfolders in there actually right? which folder is of your interest now, out of all this folder again there will be another automatically created folder for you inside this jam there will be another folder which whose name will be hd docs Okay, this folder again will be created automatically. So here, if you see inside my jam folder, there will be a folder whose name is hdocs. This folder again will be created automatically. You do not have to create it by yourself. That is, as soon as you install jam, this folder, uh, this jam will be created and inside this jam, this, along with these other folders, this hdocs folder will also be created. Now, once that folder is created, now if I open the particular folder, inside this particular folder, you will see a lots of other folders. Now, all these folders are, do not you think that they are automatically created. These are the folders that you can create. Now, see here, whenever you write, like, whenever you write like in the address bar what we typed in the address bar like that address bar that i'm talking about right here now these part whenever you write this localhost colon 8000 this thing localhost colon 8000 by default it will uh, you know it will uh, it will point to this particular thing this whenever you write localhost colon 8000 this thing is actually pointing to c colon jam colon htdocs folder Okay, now if I say you that thing, then the, what the question, what question I asked you previously was like um, uh, that, uh, you know, where this PHP crud as X folder is there, where is this main folder is there, it is there in then automatically you can say that if I say you that this localhost colon 8000 means C colon jam colon HT docs, then you know that, uh, you know, localhost Call local localhost slash php crud as x means uh, it should be there inside this inside this uh, htdoc folder. 
that PHP card is X. Okay. Now see here inside this HT doc folder you create you are allowed to create as many folders as you want say for example and each folder uh, you can consider it is an application that you are developing so for example we want to create along with these other folders suppose these folders were already there we want to create a project whose name is we want to call this you know root folder of the of our project to be project one so what we will be doing is we'll be creating a folder whose name is project one and inside this project one folder we'll be writing all our we'll be storing all our codes like whatever it is like a dot php or b dot php or a dot cs or a dot javascript or or whatever it is okay inside technically speaking i mean if you want you can do that also that is in project one you can store all your uh, you know codes there uh, as a whole but that way certainly you are not going to uh, maintain our code in, uh, in for this application but um, um, it is possible right i mean if you can if you create a project one folder inside the project one folder you can keep all your files there and then your application is ready let's do it up to let's do like just try uh, up to this part and and see whether uh, we are on the right track or not so for that reason what we what we can do is that you go to your HD docs folder okay then you create a folder you create a folder and you give it a name say for example you call it say um, say we, I'm calling it our project or you are our project okay? and I'm calling it say our project one now done this our project one is done now inside these will be you know storing the files there like whatever the files like a php files javascript files css files we actually are going to keep everything here but again inside this folder also we will be uh, creating some structure like we will be creating some subfolders and we'll put our code accordingly there okay now um, um, before that what i want you people to show you is that uh, um, let's up to this point and then let's try like up to this point whether everything is fine or not or whatever am i saying is right or not okay that is as i said now whether we are on the right track or not to do that um, let's introduce this visual studio code uh, visual code uh, also like visual studio code editor open this editor now we want to create our program we want to create our application and all the codes there we want to put inside these ht docs oblique our project right so i'm calling it say inside this we have created a folder our project i'm sorry yeah we we, we actually this is a folder we, we we can like write our project one and then inside this we want to put our source codes and then we from a web browser we want to access any one of these programs okay so that's what we are going to check uh, for the time being let's see let's uh, so open this uh, uh, visual studio code and there you oh, click on this file and then you click on open folder now you go to that seed go to your c drive and then again you know where it is in c drive it is in jamp inside jamp it is in ht docs inside ht docs what is the name of the application that you are developing which folder you are talking about you just have to select that folder do not double click here here you just select that particular folder okay this is the folder where we are going to this is our like working folder the root folder for our workspace okay so you select that particular folder once you select that folder it might show you some uh, warning messages you just i will click here yes I, I trust the author and everything and done getting started you close this space now see in the, our project one right now i do not have any subfolders and what i said to you is that technically you can put all your source code here let's put some source code there and see whether it whether using our like web browser we can access this uh, uh, these files there or not now, as I said, no, this source code basically, uh, uh, as I said, no, this folder will contain different types of files, maybe a PHP file, maybe JavaScript file, CSS file, or maybe a simple text file also. Let's create a simple text file there. I, I'm clicking here A and I'm giving it a name. Say, for example, A.txt. This is a simple text file. I double click here and I write some code here. So, hello world. Hello. Sorry. Hello world. Done. and then um, that that's all this is the only one uh, file that we have in that particular folder and that folder is inside our hd doc oblique our project one 
And now see, since this project, uh, this folder is there inside this htdoc folder, it is accessible from a web browser. It means what? Whatever that file we have created here, a.txt file, that is also sort of accessible uh, using a web browser. Let's see. Let's see these things. Um, now we know here, see here, localhost up to 8000, everything is fine. And after that, inside that htdocs folder, we have a folder, right? We know that, like that is our, our project one and inside that folder i have a file a.txt and if i press enter you will see that it will access that file it will read that file and it will get the it will get the content of the file and it will display the content on the screen done great now let me try okay if it is the case then can i create here an html file and uh, let's see uh, I add another file here. Say, for example, this time I'm calling it a.html. And then there I'm writing some code, a simple one HTML code I'm writing here, doc type HTML. And then do not, I, I guess if people know HTML, right? So this HTML and inside this simple, I mean, just for the sake of writing, I'm writing the head section. And for the sake of writing the body section, I'm writing the body section. And done. And then here I want to create, say, for example, a header of one h1 tag. And then here I'm writing welcome. This is my HTML. And so this just to make sure that, uh, like, this is HTML, I'll keep some style here. And uh, I want to make the background color, say, red. Uh, how do I write it? <laughs> background color red and, and uh, see as i said my auto save option is uh, activated here so i do not have to save anything it automatically they are saved and uh, now from here instead of a.txt now we are accessing the file html a.html now see here a.html page is accessed and accordingly it is displaying the uh, content on the screen now suppose we have developed this app and then we release this app for the user. So in, at that time, this particular portion will be replaced by HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8000. This particular portion will be replaced by some actual IP address. And when I say IP address means, uh, you know, some name maybe like suppose www.a.com oblique uh, our, pay, our, uh, our uh, project one oblique a.html. Right. So this is the like the, the, the computer and inside that computer, inside HTDocs folder, when I say inside this computer, it means it in, inside this computer, HTDoc uh, uh, exam folder, and inside that HTDoc folder, there there is a folder, our project one, and there there is this uh, file a.html. And we are interested in, uh, you know, uh, accessing this particular file there. Then, so we, and it is possible to access those files there. Now, see again, just to show you. Suppose I I I I make this Apache server off. Now it is stopped now. And if I again request this space, then it should show me an error here because my Apache is off there because nobody is listening to me. See, even if even this project folder is there in my computer, I can obviously access it using this way. But the thing is that this from this web browser, you will be no, you will not be able to access that particular file because. Uh, you know that uh, you know this this server this part is off now although i'm accessing it from the same server uh, from the same computer since this server is off nobody is listening here no one no program is listening at this particular port so um, nothing will happen actually you'll say that the page is not reachable or something like that whatever the error message that you have seen here the site is not reachable the site cannot be reached right so now I guess the people got the basic idea, and now let's um, uh, you know, finish the rest of rest of the uh, uh, you know the, the the file structure. Let's create those file structures and uh, um, proceed further. Let's see. And done. Like this is done. Now see here again. Before proceeding, let me tell you again one more thing that these two files, the content of these two files are you know static. I mean, every time you request these two files, they are not doing anything dynamic. I mean, whatever the content of those files, immediately you will be able to see those content. So, no, nothing dynamic will happen nothing it will not like consider any user input and it will not uh, do any, any 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 such things right 
now if you want nothing is actually executed here no program is getting executed here whatever it is it is sent back in this case also you do not you think that like when you write a.html like this part although it is showing you when you write a.html although it is showing you this red page oh, let it come did i start no uh, now it will happen Although it is showing you this red page with this welcome message, you should realize that be behind this web page or behind this HTML page, actually, this is the code of the page. I mean, this is the thing that the browser received from the server. And it is exactly the same as this one, if you do a comparison. So this portion is received by the browser. This incarnation or this displaying thing, displaying the content in a, in a nice way is the credit of the web browser. The web browser is actually locally, it is interpreting this code as this. Okay. So ultimately from the server, what it is receiving is this part of the code. This part of the code. Now, what we're going to do is in this, when we develop an application, then what we do is we write here, instead of writing some static code like this, we write here some uh, uh, some programs there. And in which language we write that? Using some server-side scripting language, like say, for example, PHP or ASP.NET or Java or Python, like that. We will use those languages to write some programs there. Those programs will, as an output, those programs will generate some content like, like, this and that will be sent back to the browser and the browser will interpret those content as html and it will display the content on the screen like that okay so now when we create our when we write different as i said now different different types of programs we will be writing now we want to store those different types of programs uh, or at least in different folders so that uh, later on if we have to do any modification there any re rectification there or if we have to add some more features there in the app then we will be able to you know easily do that thing and again suppose uh, you have developed the thing but later on some other people will manage those things on behalf of you uh, and that time for those people it will be easier uh, to search for a you know the code uh, responsible for a particular portion of the app and then you know, doing the required rectifications there so those maintenance tasks become very easy if you keep your code in you know in a proper way so for this app how we are going to do that we'll see okay now just now now you know like, where this uh, root folder is there like this is the root folder of your application and by default all your applications are there inside this htdoc folder which is in jam folder which is in your c drive and which is you know, in your computer so this is the root folder this will be the name of your application okay and inside this root folder we'll put all our codes and again, as I said, you can put all your codes together in the same, like without, you know, reorganizing the code, in, uh, the content of this folder. Or what we can do is another approach is that we can create different folders to store different types of code. And that is what we're going to do now. Now, let's see what are the different types of codes we'll be writing and how we are going to organize our code. Let's see here. Okay, now suppose, suppose this is your, this particular folder, this is your main folder, like your in your C drive, it is inside um, jam folder by default and then HD docs folder is also there and inside that this is the name of your application. So we are calling it say our application or our project, I guess, our project. that here yep our project done now inside this folder what we'll do is we will create a subfolder because we know that in our application somehow although we know we do not know it in details uh, at, at right and it, you know right now but still we know that in our uh, application we'll have some code that will deal with the database that is uh, that that part of the code uh, will be responsible for accessing the database and that code will put inside a folder like whatever the code whatever the different files are there uh, all those different files will be will, will put inside this particular folder say db handler you can keep any name to the folder um, but i'm calling it here db handler inside this db handler folder we'll be storing some files like say for example a dot uh, php 
okay I, I might not call it a but simply this is some php file my point is that we are going to store here some php files and those php files are some php program that those files contain some php programs and those php programs all of them whatever the programs we put here whatever the files we put here those files ultimately some you know they, they make uh, they, they they will need access to these database server i mean you know database inside this database server there will be some tables and those tables there this this php files will be accessing they either you know either this way or that way it means sometimes they will be creating uh, updating and storing files that, uh, that is there in these tables and sometimes they will be retrieving information from those tables but whatever it, whatever the php code that deals with this database part this this database server then we'll be putting it inside this database handler folder okay and then in our code there will be some code which will be responsible for generating the user interface now when when you see login this this login.php file i mean this login.php uh, this is login.php sorry this login.php file here if you see here this interface is created by uh, you know by a php program so all these uh, like and, and again this is another interface which is created by another php program say home.php this is another uh, you know uh, user interface which is created by this admin operations.php file I mean PHP program. So all those programs which are responsible for creating a user interface for the time being, we will be putting them inside this user interface folder, like user interface interface folder. Inside this user interface folder, we will be storing all the code that 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 is responsible for generating a uh, you know user interface for the user say for example the login page that is username and say for example password and there is a button say go or login or whatever okay so uh, all the code here again here also we'll be storing some php files okay so actually more than that uh, we'll be storing here um, say for example i call here a login dot php okay we'll be storing those login.php or suppose uh, say student home dot php we'll be storing some php files here uh, th those php files will be uh, you know containing program that will generate the necessary html code to generate the user interface on the user side i mean on in the client side okay so along with that also we will be uh, for each these each of these php file will be associated with a corresponding javascript file why do we need that because you see here we can avoid that but still we'll be using that that is a like good way of doing the thing so for example you consider this login.php file that will generate some html code which will create this user interface to the user like at the uh, no, client side uh, no, at the client's machine now the thing is that suppose i write here the username I, I i write i do not write anything the password i do not write anything and i simply click on this go button the default behavior is that as soon as now again see uh, now if you remember in traditional html there is a, there, there is something called as a uh, uh, you know a, a form tag and inside that form tag you have something called as a submit button if you click on that submit button then what happens is whatever the content that user has written there in that particular form everything will be sent back to the server and you know in the server either to a particular program there okay now that thing is the default behavior but what we want to do actually is that if the user clicks on this go button as soon as the user clicks on this go button what we want is actually we want to execute locally first thing see at, as soon as the user clicks here at the go button then what we want to do is first we want to execute some local programs there you know some programs some 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 local pro i'm writing it as a local program for the time being we want to execute some local program in the sense that that local program will be executed by this computer where you are actually viewing the content now suppose this is the laptop from where you are accessing the uh, not a particular place now the, see here this is the borderline like this thing is over the internet now this thing is happening over the internet this is your server this is your client 
this is the client machine and it has request for login.php you clicked on go and then i i'm saying that we want here to execute a program locally in the sense that when this program is executed it will be executed by you know, consuming the local local resources of this but that is not a local microprocessor the local ram that is the ram of this computer the ram of this uh, the microprocessor of this computer these internet connection will not be used that time okay now again you see this when we execute this login.php this program is executed at the server end okay and that is it will use the microprocessor of the server it will use the ram of the server and everything of the server so that is the server side code i mean that code will be executed at the server side and these local program that we are talking about that is called as the client side code it means what that program will be executed at the client's machine in your computer like from the computer that you are viewing the uh, no, viewing the web viewing that web page these local program will be writing in javascript now one thing you should realize here that okay so yes, say one thing now the confusion here might occur like if we want to execute this login.php in the server computer then we have that code that server have that code for execution right but the thing is that how am I, because I'm accessing a particular web page uh, from a server and then how the, how my computer, because I want this code to execute, to be executed locally, right? That is this program that we are talking about. When we click on this button, first thing that we want to do is we want to execute a program locally here. Yeah. Right, that is my point. Now, if that program has to be executed locally, it means that our computer has to know the code of the program. Like, what is the source code? Then only it can execute the program, right? So, if how my computer will know like what source code is to be executed? So that is the question. So, for that reason, what we have to do is ultimately, although it is called as a server, uh, sorry, client side scripting in the sense this is called client side scripting in the sense that that code will be executed at the client machine not in the server machine in that sense however this code also this javascript code also you have to write as a developer i mean you know if somebody is saying that i'm a client side developer server side developer it means it doesn't mean that actually go to the client side and you do some development there and server side scripter will be doing some you know uh, some development at you know at the uh, on the server side like you know, in your company or in the particular computer where you're keeping those um, uh, which you are making as a server it's it's not in that sense only in that sense that that, that these server sites uh, the code that you write using this server side scripting language that will be executed at the client's machine now where that code will be that code should be there in the server itself or certainly you can keep uh, that, that, that now no, we'll come to that point now see for the time being we'll assume that that code also that javascript code that javascript code that you want to execute at the client side that also should be there in your server itself uh, how you are going to maintain that that code we are going going to maintain for each file we'll assume that for each php file there will be one corresponding javascript file also that is if login.php is there we'll also assume that login.javascript is also there now when the user executes this um, when the user first suppose the user is actually first requesting for this login.php file when the user requests a page or you know um, from the browser uh, that request is sent to the server the server receives that request and it executes the corresponding php file to generate the you know to generate the output html now when it sends like what it will do is it will first generate the output html as you know it will execute this program and somehow it will generate this html code and that html code is sent back to the browser and as a result the browser displays you this uh, in uh, this same html but in a graphical way that part you already knew but the thing is along with this html also what this login.php will do is also it will send the corresponding javascript code that you want uh, to be executed on the server side see for each page the javascript code might be different and that javascript code this javascript code which is to be executed in the client's machine is actually supplied by the server from the server itself as soon as you request this login.php page automatically along with that page this javascript file will also be you know sent by the server to the browser okay 
and now that time this problem is solved now see here basically this javascript code is some 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 code uh, like like a c program or something some programs along with this html code you are also sending some programs uh, to this uh, to this browser okay and based on these code that you have written on the javascript so a different uh, you know different functions from that javascript file will be called at different time as you write the code okay we'll we'll look into that matter but for the time being as long as this uh, you know organization of the code inside the server is considered a concern then what we'll do is for each file we'll be creating actually for each php file there inside this user interface folder we'll be creating two files actually one is the php file and one is the corresponding javascript file you might be uh, saying sir sometimes it might happen that uh, that javascript file is not needed that is we do not want anything to happen at the server side oh sorry at the client side uh, when we see this page uh, and uh, no client side scripting is needed yeah certainly that time you can omit this but most of the times you will find a need of this you know supporting javascript file which we usually would want uh, uh, you know to be executed at the clients uh, at the client side Okay, and based on different uh, user interaction, like if the user clicks on this button, then we want to execute, suppose, a specific uh, JavaScript program. If the if the user suppose clicks here and the focus is lost, then also we want we might want to use a JavaScript function and do the things. As you remember, see here, see, see one example here, just uh, a quick example um, here. Say. Um, these, these, this, this example I already showed you in the first video. That's why I'm again showing you. Uh, say, for example, CSM20. Uh, sorry, it was there in admin page. I'm sorry. Uh, say, that's there. That's there. No, admission table and autumn semester. Add a student here. Say, for example, if I give here a username and see, as soon as my control is lost, I mean, as soon as I go out of this text box, I, I want to execute a program. Now, that thing, that thing is done using a JavaScript file file that is because if, when i lose my control here it is known to my local computer okay the local computer that is locally it is known that i lost the focus of this particular control that is my uh, now this is no longer a you know active control that time that time an event is raised actually and that event at that particular event we can actually execute some javascript code now you might be thinking, so if it is a JavaScript code, then how come? And if it is executed locally, then how come the name of the student is coming here corresponding to this particular role number? Yeah, that is true. I I only said you that the some part of the code we want to ex we want this program to execute locally. But the thing is that it will execute the thing locally and after that it might decide that is from this uh, you know, javascript program itself it might decide that okay now it is done and from here from this javascript program from this javascript program what you might want to do is you might want to send a web request that is you might want to actually you know send a request to the web browser to execute a particular program there inside this web browser and that thing will be doing using your ajax that is from JavaScript file, from a JavaScript program. Actually, we'll be we'll be requesting uh, you know, our server to execute a server side code. And again, you see here, whatever the JavaScript, whatever the JavaScript we send from here, JavaScript file that we send from here, that JavaScript file only contains the name of the ASX program at least the name of the program that we want to execute on this uh, at this server. It doesn't contain the source code of the ASX folder. You know, as X uh, function that we want to execute, and that source code of the as X function is still there, uh, 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 you know, at the server side. One thing by this time you should realize that see this JavaScript function, whatever the JavaScript functions you write, that JavaScript function is visible to the user. I mean, from at this client machine, if the user wants to see, that is, if the client wants to see what is the source code of this JavaScript file, that the client will be able to see. Okay, that JavaScript source code is not hidden from the you know, user of the application. However, the PHP source code is hidden from the user. I mean, from the user of the application. The user of the application will not know what code, what are the, what is the actual code which is getting executed. They will only be able to see the output generated by these, these PHP programs. So that way, when you make an AJAX call, that what is the actual code? that will not be uh, you know visible to these uh, uh, you know users that actual code will again be somewhere here
okay so till now what let me do a recap here what we are actually discussing is although i'm going into some of the details of the things but which will be useful at some point of time but let, let us uh, do a uh, you know quick uh, uh, recap of the thing okay so that uh, we become again on the track the first thing is that all the code we're talking about the organization of the code how we are going to maintain our code uh, in our uh, applications first thing is that we have to create a, a folder whose name is same as the name of the application okay so for example our project and inside that folder what we are going to do is all the code that deals with the database uh, uh, we'll be uh, putting them inside this folder db handler and then uh, all the codes which are responsible for generating some user interface we'll be putting it inside this uh, uh, user interface folder and again for each user interface we'll be creating two files one is the php file which is responsible for generating the html plus we'll be creating one javascript file which will be sent uh, along with the html code to the client machine so that at the client side we we might uh, you know we are able to execute some some code locally there at the client machine itself and again, we, we learned that from the client machine, from the JavaScript function, at some situations, we might want to do a AJAX call. That is, we might want to, again, send some request to the server. Okay, I want, to, uh, that is, we want to execute some server code and we, we want to know the result of that particular execution. Okay, so those things are called done, those things will be done by this AJAX calling. And for that reason, in our, uh, in our uh, uh, file structure, what we're going to do is we are going to create another folder called as azx handler okay azx handler now what this azx handler folder will contain is it will contain again you see here again it will contain some php file say for example login azx azx dot php although i'm calling it login azx this name could be anything like a dot php b dot php or something but thing that you should remember that this these this folder again will contain some 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 files like b.php some php files actually some some code there some server side code there you see here whenever we want to do say for example in this case what is happening here is in this particular case uh, in this case as soon as i uh, write the name uh, like say for example i do a, a roll number here which is not there i press on tab so it means what as soon as i go out of my i i, I know as soon as i lose focus as soon as i uh, this uh, my control uh, goes uh, out of this text box then what happens is it it makes we we make a as x call there in this fashion that is here like some text box was there and as soon as the control goes out of this text box then what we want to do is we want to locally execute a javascript function that in turn makes a server side uh, that that in turn makes a call to the server for the execution of a specific function there and in this case what is happening is in that specific function is that whether this particular that is whether this particular student is there in, in the database or not Okay, so you can realize that you should, you know, that this will basically, and in our code, what we're going to do is all such functions, all those functions which we want our, uh, you know, which which we want to execute uh, by calling, uh, by you know, doing some asx call, we are putting it inside this asx handler folder, and see here all these functions. So when we make this asx call, ultimately you can think that these asx call will you know you will we'll point to some of the files there and inside this some of the inside uh, that particular file a particular function will be there and that function will be executed and after execution whatever the result of that function it will be it will be returned back to the it will be returned back from where it was requested to see here in this case it will be returned back to the javascript function not the browser so that way you should realize that the browser will not up, you know, update itself i mean the page will not be reloaded or nothing like that will happen only thing is that from the javascript file you javascript program you are actually calling an asx uh, uh, asx function so what will happen is uh, in our code wherever this asx folder is there inside that folder there will be some files there will be some functions inside that file that particular function all this information you will specify actually in this asx call you do not need to worry we'll see the code there like that code allows us to specify everything like which file i'm talking about where that file is there inside that file what function it is there and how it should be executed and when executed what result that fu function should return us everything will be there in this asx uh, when we make some asx call like when we write the code to do that thing
But at the end, you should realize that after once that function is executed, it will return you some result usually, and that result will be sent back to the JavaScript uh, code again. And uh, that JavaScript code in uh, in turn will update the user interface, the corresponding user interface. Okay, that is here. See, um, uh, in this case, uh, so if it is not a new student, then it will display a pop up uh, you know window that says that it is it's a new student. But if it is an existing student, then if it is an existing student, then what it will do is that is see here if it is an existing student then the details will be sent back from this server like what is the uh, you know name of the student and what is the program of the student and everything all these information will be sent back to the javascript file as a result it will write those information there in the corresponding fields where it wants to display those details instead you now without actually uh, doing a refresh to the page the rest of the content of the page will remain same uh, so um, as soon as i press the tab there see it just shows you okay the name of the student is this and it is in this particular program rest of the program like rest of the things are not changing actually okay so that is how in our code in terms of our uh, you know organization of the code what we will do is all those asx handler we will be putting inside this asx handler folder most of the things are done just give me like another it will take another five minutes and done then along with that along with that also i said you no know, that responsiveness is there the designing part is there so all our css file all our css file we will put inside a folder okay that here we'll see like we'll be using one css library that is called as a bootstrap library okay so we will download the code of bootstrap library and we'll put that code here inside this bootstrap inside the css folder uh, we'll create a subfolder called bootstrap and inside that subfolder we'll We'll, we'll see that thing but ultimately uh, you should uh, for the time being know that, that we'll be creating one css folder inside that we'll be putting our css files there and again you see here these uh, you know uh, these uh, uh, uh this displaying uh, you know this uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, how this HTML code basically the server is sending some HTML code to the uh, client machine uh, that client browser but the thing is the browser is displaying you the uh, the HTML in, in in a graphical way so that CSS actually that CSS information while it is displaying that um, you know your HTML code um, in a graphical way it also need to know like what are the styles which are applied on these HTML tags? So for that reason, not only these HTML and JavaScript is sent from the server, but also at the same time, it also sends the CSS, uh, you know, like CSS information, some extra CSS file usually, uh, which describes the CSS property or the style property of, of different tags present there in this HTML uh, content. Okay, so basically the server responds with HTML thing, HTML code plus some JavaScript code plus some CSS code. Whatever the Java, this JavaScript code, code is needed to be sent back to the user because we want this code these are some source code which will be sent to the you know the the, the, uh, the users um, uh, and because we want this code to be executed at the server side uh, sorry at the client side and at the same time this css also you can assume to be some some sort of code which will be again executed at the client side and for that reason we also have to uh, you know it is the server also has to you know sub uh, uh, um, you know but it also has to you know provide those uh, css files along with the html uh, code there so uh, for our organization part uh, like how we are going to do is inside our main folder inside our main application folder we'll also maintain a folder whose name is css and uh, see here this css although we want different javascript file for different uh, user interface usually one or two global css file will be used for all 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 these different uh, you know html pages because the you know these things are same like CSS only describes the styling property. Like suppose we want uh, some red blue color button, some you know, circled red color uh, button like that and s s some things. We'll come to know, we'll, we'll go into the details of those things. But the, you, uh, you should know at this point that we, uh, although we have to create different JavaScript files for different user interface, we do not have to do the same thing with the CSS uh, files. Only one or two global CSS files will do fine. So all our CSS code we'll put inside this particular css folder the last thing now what we need is 
we can like if i click on this button then um, um, then i want something to happen there so that will happen using this javascript code which will write inside these uh, javascript files there right up to that point everything is fine but the thing is that we can write pure vanilla flavored javascript or what we can do is you can use some some sort of libraries there like here in this application we will be using a very basic level library and that is called as a jquery library jquery is a javascript library that allows you to write javascript code in a more efficient way i mean if you can write less amount of javascript code uh, using if you are using this jquery library and there are like lots of inbuilt functions there that uh, you know that reduces your javascript code up to a great uh, you know, extent and again if you understand how this jquery works then understanding those other uh, uh, frameworks like uh, react or 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 as I said, Angular JS will be much easier for you. And this is like a sort of learning C programming language actually before learning some other type of programming languages. Okay, so we'll be using that uh, jQuery library also, and all the code related to that J jQuery library will be putting inside a jQuery folder. So having said so, like these are the only things; these are the folders that we will need. Okay, like although this diagram is quite messy for the time being, uh, let me uh, write it in a more clear way in just one minute. Okay, so inside these, inside our um, C colon slash slash jamp slash ht docs and slash our project. This is the main folder. Our project will be creating some folders like one folder will be user interface. We'll just now we are going to create this one folder will be user interface. One folder will be DB handler. You know the purpose of these folders now. And then another folder we'll be creating is your um, now CSS folder. One will be one folder will be to store the jQuery library, and another folder will be to store the PHP file that does this as X handling. So we'll be calling it say as X handler. Having um, yeah, and then again in these user in I would just want to tell you that this user interface folder will contain some subfolders like for each task we'll be creating since we are creating like for each task we are creating at least two to files right say a dot php and a dot javascript so we'll be keeping those tasks separately I suppose this is the you know, this is these are the pages related to login these are the pages related to admission and these are the pages related to something else like that so inside this user interface folder we'll be creating sub, some subfolders there but um, for the time being this is the structure that we want for our application okay and uh, let's uh, before finishing the video let's create them actually and uh, we'll proceed further uh, in the next video when we'll be doing some actual code Okay, so let's create those, uh, at least those, uh, you know, the structures there. We do not need, we do not want these two full files there. So I'll be selecting both of them and I'm clicking on delete. And then, then what we want is we want to add a folder. I can right click and I can add a new folder. Or what I can do is I can click on this particular button and it will add a folder there. So what folder we want? First, we want this user interface, interface folder. You know, this is done. Then we want to add another folder that is for DB handler. All our database code will put inside this DB handler. And then again, we want to add another folder of, that will be called, uh, I know, AZX handler. AZX handler. All our AZX handler, all our AZX code will be like all the code that we want to execute uh, using AZX, we'll be putting it inside uh, this inside this folder and then the last uh, and then another one we need for our uh, css folder okay and then another one we'll be needing for jquery this folder will contain the you know, source code of jquery we'll be coming to that point and then what and uh, these are the main actually three things this is business logic this is a database part and this is user interface part and this is a jquery part this is css part done now our file structure is ready and also i told you like what is the reason behind creating that file structure and how more or less i tried to give you an idea about how things are happening there 
okay now we are ready to write the actual code like now what we're going to do is in the next video we'll try to develop you know one use case and the first use case that we'll try to develop is this use case like the uh, the, uh, the student log in base that is we will assume that there is a student database table there we'll, we'll i'll tell you all the details that is just a recap of the um, uh, sort of uh, you know uh, the trial of, of 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 what we're going to do in the next video so we are going to develop this uh, uh this uh, um this use case there in, in in our next video where uh, a student will be able to put their role number as username and some password that clicks on this login login button then the student will be landing in their login page if the username and password is right otherwise if it is wrong say if i write something there something there and it will say me that it is an invalid combination of username and password so these use case we are going to develop uh, in our next video till then have a nice day